Hello everybody. In this video, I'm going to give an update on my portfolio. I didn't make a portfolio update yesterday because I was just too busy and tired from this weekend. I've had a very busy weekend, but today I was able to find time to make a video. So right now my portfolio is worth $92,207.21. Today was a red day for me. I lost some money. During the day, I lost $489.16. And then after hours, I lost another $46.15. So $500 down today. Let's go over my positions. For my options, I'm selling Amazon $180 covered calls. These expire August 16th. My total return, $18. I'm selling Disney $92 covered calls. These expire August 16th. My total return, $8. I'm selling Google $170 covered calls. These expire August 16th. My total return, $5. I'm selling SoFi $7.5 covered calls. These expire August 16th. My total return, $180. I have Amazon $120, $110 put credit spreads. These expire October 18th. My total return $64. I have Amazon $200, $210 call credit spreads. These expire October 18th. My total return, I am down $10. I'm selling Disney $90 covered calls. Expiration date is October 18th. My total return $55. I have McDonald's $210, $200 put credit spreads. These expire December 20th. My total return $920. I have McDonald's $300, $310 call credit spreads. These expire December 20th. My total return, I am down $380. I have Verizon $35, $33 put credit spreads. These expire December 20th. My total return, $653. I have Verizon $47, $49 call credit spreads. These expire December 20th. My total return, I am down $50. I have Disney $70 calls. These expire December 19th, 2025. My total return, I am down $124. For my stocks, I have 300 shares of Amazon. Amazon is at $170.45. My average cost, $98.94. My total return, $21,458.38. I have 6,000 shares of SoFi. SoFi is at $6.65. My average cost, $5.62. My total return, $6,160.80. I have 400 shares of Disney. Disney is at $85.61. My average cost, $67.50. My total return, $7,244. I have 100 shares of Google. Google's at $162.69. My average cost, $142.48. My total return, $2,021. This is a margin account. My margin total is $90,393.75.
My margin used is $57,125.47. My options collateral is $22,000. This leaves me with $11,268.28 in buying power. My margin status is low risk. My buffer is $25,085.40. This is how much money I can lose before I get margin called. My annual interest rate is 6.75%. The daily interest that I'm paying is $9.01. And I'm borrowing $1,000 interest free. So a red day for me lost about $500. However, if we look at the monthly, I think I'm green now. I'm up about 2.76% for the monthly. Um, year to date, it looks like I'm now green again, only by a little bit, but I'm still green for year to date. I'm up $253.64 year to date. Compared to a year ago, I'm up $14,095.78. So it looks like things are slowly recovering, although I'm nowhere near where, you know, my the, the peak of how my portfolio was this year was over you know about one hundred eight thousand dollars so from there i've dropped down by a lot now i'm only at ninety two thousand but we'll see what happens moving forward for now i'm just holding on and things are okay they could be worse <laughs> you know that's what i tell myself um so there are a couple positions expiring on the 16th which is this friday that's three more days so I have my Amazon, Disney, Google, and SoFi covered calls. And right now, all of them are below the strike prices that I chose. So Amazon is below 180, Disney is below 92, Google is below 170, and SoFi is below seven and a half dollars. And I think for now, I want to keep it this way. Um, the strike prices, I mean, I'm, I don't feel a need to lower them or increase them in any way. So I'll leave them as is for now and we'll see what happens. And let's see, I know I sometimes get um, comments saying, oh, you, you're already, you know, at 96% return. Why don't you get rid of this? And the thing is, just because it just currently shows that right now, doesn't mean that that's the actual value I can actually uh, sell it for. So, for example, three cents, right? For this McDonald's put credit spread. Even though it shows three cents, realistically, I don't think I can actually get rid of this for three cents. If you look at throughout the day, it was like 27, 26, right? 22. So realistically, it's probably actual value of like around 25 cents, nowhere near three cents. So I know sometimes Robin Hood, it glitches out and shows some bogus value that isn't really the real value that you can buy and sell at. And I've actually had this, um, this issue long long time ago it's not even a new thing you know robin hood has been doing this for a while showing weird bogus values so yeah this is not real you know i i can't really get rid of this for three cents but that's what it shows right now you know sometimes it'll be like 20 something 25 cents throughout the day and all of a sudden it'll just drop immediately to three cents i don't know but uh, yeah, three cents is not the real value of this spread. I, I, I wouldn't be able to close it out for three cents. Realistically, if I wanted to close this out, it'll probably be more like 25, 26 cents. In my experience, I've been using Robinhood for years, so this is nothing new to me. Um, I've encountered this many, many times. But yeah, just, just to clear things up with you guys. Now, something new that I didn't talk about before, my Disney uh, diagonal spread. Now, the thing is, Robinhood doesn't really, you see how these are all grouped together, like put credit spreads, you know, call credit spreads, but with diagonal spreads, because they're on different expiration days, right? This, the different parts of the diagonal spread, one is on October 18th of this year, and then the other, you know, Disney call that I bought is on December 19th of 2025. So because they're on different expiration dates at different strike prices as well, um, Robinhood is not grouping them together into one single position. They're displaying them as two separate things, but together it's a diagonal spread. Some might even call it a poor man's covered call, but not really because I feel like $70 is kind of a little too close to the current price to call it a 
Poor Man's Covered call. If I bought the Disney, say, $40 call or $30 call, then I guess at that point you might be able to call it a Poor Man's Covered call. But as it is right now, I would call it more like a diagonal spread. So the Disney $70, $90 diagonal spread. Um, and yeah, it displays it as two different things, but uh, together it it's counts as one position, in my opinion. Anyways, um, I have five of them now, and I think I switched things around. Before I had the Disney $100 call that I was selling, now I chose the strike price of $90 instead. So I stuck with the same expiration date of October 18th. I just changed the strike price from $100 down to $90. To, uh, same thing as always, to gain a little bit more premium. Disney $70 call expiring in 2025 in December. Mm, it's still a long, long time from now, so... The thing is, the break-even for this is, what, 93 I believe? Yeah, so Disney, the break-even price, $93.40. So, if Disney ends up above $93.40 by this date, this call by itself is gonna, you know, be in the money. It's, it's gonna... It's gonna have a uh, profit for me, you know, I'm gonna end up on top just from this call alone, but the whole point of a diagonal spread is I have the call that I actually bought, but then I actually have the call that I'm selling also to gain a bit of premium. So I'm, you know, I'm trying to make money both ways here from the call itself going above its break even price and then from selling a call um, and making premium off of that. That's the whole idea. But Disney has not been performing well. Amazon, SoFi, and Google, they have they were all green today. The only stock position that went red today was my Disney shares. So I have 400 shares of Disney, and unfortunately, Disney was not green today. It went down 0.41% today. So, not good. Um, the thing about call options is, you know, the value decays over time. So, even if Disney doesn't go down by a lot, even if it goes down by 0.41%, if it just stays this way, then, uh, you know, my call options uh, for Disney are going to lose value over time. Even though I, you know, they expire in 2025, but still. Anyways, that's my portfolio. Um, unfortunately, Disney is probably the worst performing part of my portfolio. I still believe in them long term. And I'm a huge fan of Disney um, in terms of their ability to make money in the long term. Uh, I do think they have a good brand. They just need to take their IP and use it well. Um, that's really the important thing is they have the tools available, I, I think. They just need to use the tools and, you know, put them to good use. Anyways, that's pretty much it for my portfolio. Those are my thoughts. Those are my positions. Uh, I know I have a lot of different positions. I think I received a comment recently about, you know, having too many positions. But the thing is, these don't really require a lot of active decision making. Like, for example, my Amazon credit spreads, they've just been sitting there. I, I haven't actively done anything with these. Uh, most of my positions are just, just set it and just sit back and do nothing, you know? I don't actively have to manage it uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Same thing with my McDonald's spreads, right? My, my McDonald's spreads, I opened them and then I did nothing with them. They're just sitting there. Uh, Verizon also. And also another reason why it looks like I have so many positions is because, again, the grouping system of Robinhood. This is actually an iron condor. This is, this is a Verizon iron condor. And if I were to open all these at the same time, it would show up as an iron condor. However, Robinhood is weird. It doesn't detect that this is one iron condor, so it shows it as two separate you know, spread positions. Same thing with McDonald's. This is technically an iron condor. If you if you take a look at all the positions involved in this, it adds up to an iron condor. But Robinhood doesn't display it as you know one position of an iron condor. It splits it up. So that's another reason as well why it looks like I have more positions than I really do have. Uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, yeah, most of my positions they don't require me to 
actively manage it on a day-to-day -day basis. I just sit back and do nothing most of the time. All right, uh, enough talking. I, I think I've let this video go on long enough. Okay, um, I'll keep on making more portfolio updates so you guys know what's you know going on. If anything goes down, anything goes up. If I open any new positions, if I close old ones, I'll let you guys know. But that's pretty much it for now. All right, thank you so much for watching. If you guys like this type of content and you guys want to see more portfolio updates in the future, please make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll keep on making these type of videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.